So when it comes to competing at the top level for NRL 22 or PRS 22, one of the benefits for the rifles that I built is I ensure the accuracy. And how I do that is because I actually test every single one of these rifles downrange. Well, sometimes you just don't get one that shoots well. And this one's a perfect example. Now, this is a good friend of mine that sent me a couple barrels for me to, to uh, barrel up for a Rem X. And unfortunately, through my experience and actually using my air gauge, I found quite a bit of high spots in those barrels and downrange performance is very subpar. So in this video, we're gonna talk about 22 long rifle accuracy based off my experience. And folks that have been following me on my channel know that I've been building quite a bit of these 22 long rifle rifles. And obviously every single one of these rifles I have to test downrange. So I can basically share my experience with you guys today. So this is gonna be a really good topic for today's video. We're gonna bust some fallacies on the 22 long rifle accuracy. You guys will like this one. Stay tuned. So to go over the rifle that we're testing and comparing today, uh, this is a Rimex, and this one has a Lyja barrel. This is a one in 12 twist at 22 inches length. Um, I did want to basically test for accuracy before I put a barrel tuner on this thing. What I'm gonna do is basically um, turn down the barrel here about two inches and put one of my EY tuners on there. Now this sits inside an Element 4.0 chassis, and basically what we did was uh, barrel up two actions, um, which we're gonna send off um, to him. Unfortunately, when I did my testing on the first one, and I had quite a bit of flyers, um, especially cold round, uh, cold bore shift, and this being a PRS style rifle, we absolutely cannot have any cold bore shift. That means on every single stage, that's a possibility of a point drop. So this one, we'll see what it does downrange. This is fresh off the lathe, and uh, we'll see if this thing performs. So let's talk about some of the rumors that we hear and see quite often. Well, well, at least what I hear and see on videos and, and forums and stuff is about 22 long rifle barrels needing a break in. There is seasoning and that we'll get to that in a little bit, but the essential term of breaking in a barrel for a 22 long rifle, well, that's essentially impossible to do. If you think about it, lead's a hell of a lot softer than the stainless steel and lead has no abrasive properties <laughs> in order to break in or remove any of the tooling marks out of a barrel. So when I hear folks on video say about, oh, it's gonna take about 300 rounds until the accuracy comes together, that's absolutely false. So on a good barrel, and we're talking about, you know, good quality barrel like Krieger's and Douglas, um, Bart lines, any of that, you should automatically see your group um, come together within the first 15 to 30 rounds. So let's uh, talk about seasoning a barrel. Obviously the barrel being brand new needs to have the barrel coated with the wax or the lubricant that the 22 long rifle is encased with. So that's why you hear folks talk about seasoning and switching between types of ammo like SK Lapua, which uses kind of a, a very, I guess, baby oil style um, lubricant versus Ely 10X, which is beeswax. So let's get the first five shots out of this thing. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, shot number one was right here. Shot two was up here, and then the rest of them fell in line right here. So you can see it starting to season up the barrel. Now the next five shots should completely season up that barrel. And then after that, we should start seeing some groups. What I'm gonna test for afterward is cold bore shift. So let me get this scope zeroed out uh, to this group here and continue on. All right, so I just shot another five shots. So this would be 10 down the pipe. And one of the things that I noticed um, with the rifle cooling down, loading the mag and adjusting the scope is it had a huge cold bore shift. And we're talking almost two to three tenths um, on the right. It is starting to come together on the group. However, that cold bore shift is concerning me. And this is some of the things that I look for when I build these rifles. So here at 50 yards, that was the first shot or basically number six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 all right here. And this is what's concerning me. So what I'm gonna do, since I have this scope zeroed out, is I'm gonna basically let it cool down for 10 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and shoot a group again to see if that cold bore ship is still there. If it is, that's telling me that that barrel is got some tight spots and 
you know, later on in the video, I'll go over basically what I find with my air gauge tool and what causes this. Well, in the meantime, while this rifle right here cools down, we're gonna go ahead and shoot this one. Uh, this is another brand new rifle that I finished up today uh, for a client of mine. This one does have a shilling barrel. It is a one in 16 twist select match. So this one is already um, from the factory, the highest grade quality from shilling. I then further air gauge and sorted these barrels out. And from my experience, I look for a 0.217 or 0.2168 bore diameter with less curvature as much as possible. So if I go over 20, 20 thousandths of barrel curvature, that barrel actually goes back to the manufacturer. So this would be proven um, theory from you know my testing and stuff that I do for my shop is let's see how this performs, fresh off the lathe, just clean, brand new fresh build, and see what kind of performance we have. Now I do have a, a scope cam that will ACB filming through, so, and this is uh, using an Arkin EP5 scope. So same kind of ammo, SK rifle. You can actually see that bullet flight <laughs> through this camera, pretty cool. All right, so these are the first shots. I don't know if you guys can see that already. It's starting to group. That's the first three shots. That was number four. And it's already coming together. So this barrel, comparing to the Elijah barrel, which is up there, that's the first five shots. And that's the first five shots out of the Elijah. So you can already see the performance difference out of these two barrels. So let me go ahead and get this thing zeroed out and go for another five shot group. Let's aim for the left target here. Actually, let's go for the same target. Let's just see if I get this thing zeroed out. Pretty close. Same ragged hole. That was a little bit me. And this should be the last shot here. All right. So I did have a little bit of wind pickup, but you can already see the performance difference comparing the Schillen barrel versus Elijah. So that's the first 10 shots out of this barrel. What we're going to do is let this one cool down and absolutely test for that cold bore shift, just like I was mentioning about this Elijah barrel. So one thing I forgot to mention about this barrel is on the high sides, um, you could actually feel it with the jag. What I ended up doing was before going out to the range here is I took um, JB bore pace and went to town pretty much polishing those high sides out. Now it does like seem to perform, but the, the cold bore shift is a huge concern. Let's check out the target here. So this was the first shot. My point of aim was right here. First shot here, second shot here, third, fourth, and then fifth. We're all right there. Then we did another five shot group and you can see with that warm barrel, it is holding true to the point of aim. However, for you know competing at the top level for PRS or NRL 22, for instance, you're taking a 100 yard shot, KYL, that is going to be a miss, a definite miss if you don't know where your cold bore shift is and that tends to change quite often with the weather changes so having uh, like i said this is a mill radian um, target so this would be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 mil and about 0.1 left of a cold bore shift from my point of aim so a 0.3 and a 0.1 that's um in my, in my books i i will not let that rifle go out of my shop so that's elijah barrel and it definitely is performing better than the other one but I had to, like I said, polish out the barrel quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and check out the Schillen barrel now. Okay, so we got another 10 rounds loaded up with the Wooksford Yosa chassis here with the Schillen barrel. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to shoot five shots with the target cam on the scope and then take it off and shoot another five shots just in case there's a little bit of parallax issue um, 
you know, induced with a target cam here. So we are looking for a cold bore shift. We're going to keep everything on this rifle here on the bottom. We'll go for the left side here. Shoot a group. Okay. That's right where my point of aim was. There's a little bit of a breeze pushing uh, right to left here. Second shot confirmed that. A little bit of vertical. And that was five. All right, so we'll go ahead and take this target cam off. And let's see what the next five shots look like. So no cold bore shift on this rifle. And accuracy is definitely showing um, to be pretty good. Like I said, I got a slight wind breeze, so I'm gonna take account of that. At least a five or six mile an hour breeze here. So we're gonna go to the far right target here. Let's go for a group. Yep, point of aim did change on me. The point of impact actually. Yeah. So accuracy of this rifle, superb. Um, I could definitely tell that this one is going to be a winner. Let's go check out those groups. So in my experience with the Schillen barrels, I've actually been on and off uh, with using Schillen in the past. Some of the Schillen 22 long rifle barrels I had during the whole uh, pandemic um, actually weren't good. Were giving me the same kind of situation of cold bore shift as well as poor accuracy in my previous build. So I stopped actually ordering them um, for about a couple years now. Switched over to Krieger for a little bit and decided to try out some shillings again and found out that their production barrels are pretty damn accurate. So I've been pretty happy with shilling. So here's the groups on that Wux chassis. As you can tell with the uh, target cam footage, zero cold bore shift producing one ragged hole. And here was the last five shots with the target cam off. And you can see that's very consistent. I call that a pretty good performance. So like I mentioned, one of the benefits when folks reach out to my shop is I actually go through and I test all these aspects on these rifles. They absolutely do not leave my shop until it shoots a .3 consistent group or better. Obviously with a lot of ammo that I have, you can see that it does pretty well. So you still have to do your due diligence on finding the ammo that the rifle likes. So the benefit to the chambers and the barrels that I put on these rifles is that I could kind of widen the ammo availability for you meaning that this will be less picky on the ammo that you plan on shooting. So if you plan on shooting SK rifle match, it will tend to shoot SK rifle match pretty well. Obviously you do have to pick the lot that eliminates the flyers and all that. But like I said, you'll be less um, hunting, so to say, for that ammo. Now, as far as this rifle here, like I said, I built this for a friend of mine. He did send over the rifle barrels um, to me. And this is one of the reasons why I don't accept barrels from folks uh, to barrel up. One of the things is I actually am putting my name on these rifle builds. So if I let one of these slip by, performing the way it does, as you can see with that cold bore shift, that kind of dictates my shop's name. So I like to control every aspect of my rifle builds, um, especially with the barrels. So if you guys are looking for the best accuracy uh, for these 22 long rifle, um, I highly recommend to basically let me do my job picking out the barrel for you. Now, as far as twist rate and what's the best out there, I absolutely do not see a difference on going with a one in 12 versus a one in 16, which will bring up another fallacy that folks tend to, to talk about. Some of these guys uh, going with a one in nine twist versus a one in 16 are claiming better accuracy, a longer range. Now, what I can say is when you get out to 400 yards and specifically using Ely match, or Ely 10X, the EPS style bullets, the one in 14 twist does seem to hold a little bit better stability versus the one in 16, meaning that it does hold tighter at that longer distance. However, a lot of these PRS matches or NRL 22 matches are around 150 yards and in. That's majority of your points. 
So there are gonna be some stages out the 300 yards, but you're looking at maybe one or two stages, realistically. So the guys that are actually focusing on these long range stages and trying to tighten up the long range uh, shots for PRS, um, ideally you're, you're going about it the wrong way. Uh, you're gonna be losing more points on the shorter uh, target distances you know the 150 and in is primarily again where your target engagements are going to be so if you're trying to find that lot of ammo specifically to shoot in the one and nine twist and the one and 12 um, i think you're kind of just wasting your time in my opinion and this is just based off my experience so what i did find with the one and 12 twist and the one in tens and one in nines and all that is that it makes the rifle extremely picky on the ammo uh, what it'll tend to do is throw flyers like that you know cold bore shift um, flyers left and right just throughout the group size just um, some of the things that you just can't control with these faster twist rates what it tends to do is mess up the obturation mess up your standard deviation and obviously you would have to lot hunt um, a little bit more to get that ammo to shoot or get the ammo to shoot for that rifle so let's get back to the shop i want to show you guys something uh, that i've been playing with and talk about uh, some of the theories that I look into uh, with a with a 22 long rifle, bringing my experience with the cast lead shooting that I've been doing before. I'm actually a cast bullet shooter as well. I shoot a lot of uh, paper patch bullets, um, uh, cast rifle bullets, and from that experience, I can share my knowledge about obturation and cast lead projectiles. So let's get back to the shop. So to not make this video super long, we're going to basically break this up into two parts. So in part two, we're going to go over basically the science behind the 22 long rifle, its design, and go over some aspects that I've actually been looking into that may be causing some of your flyers. So stick around, stay tuned. You'll like that one. 